Throughout history, one of the most brutal and shocking execution methods has been by axe. Henry VIII, during his time in power as a Tudor king of England, executed two of his wives, but only one of them would die by an axe. Throughout Hitler's time in power in Germany, he and his Nazi party sentenced thousands of people to death in a number of different ways. They used methods such as a guillotine and firing squads to take the lives of those who resisted and dissented against the Nazi regime, and to speak out against Hitler was considered very dangerous. Inside of prisons, many people were beheaded using the guillotine, and this was believed to have been a very quick and reliable method of killing. The Nazis sentenced many people to death using it, including well-known resistors such as Sophie Scholl, and the executions using guillotine took just a matter of seconds, from when a condemned person entered the execution chamber to when the blade of the guillotine was released. But as mentioned, even after Hitler's rise to power, some executioners were still using the hand axe to complete executions. One woman who was sentenced to death in this brutal and bloody manner was Benita von Falkenhayn, who was a German baroness that worked as a spy for the Second Polish Republic. But what is the story of her horrific execution? Join us today to find out, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Benita von Falkenhayn was born in Berlin to a noble family, which had a possession of a castle, and this was found in the Swiss Fergau region for centuries. They were very well known across European circles, and as a young woman she married a retired senior lieutenant named Muller Eckhardt, and then after this two-year marriage she then remarried a childhood friend, senior lieutenant Richard von Falkenhayn. He was a relative of the First World War general Erich von Falkenhayn, who was known for his failure at the Battle of Verdun. However, following the marriage to her second husband, she took her husband's surname, becoming Benita von Falkenhayn. But after a seven-year marriage, the couple divorced on the 18th of December 1930 by mutual agreement. Within two years, and on the 18th of October 1932, she was married yet again, this time to an aircraft engineer, Baron Josef von Berg. Her legal name from this was Baroness Benita Ursula von Berg, and with this she became a German baroness for a short period of time. However, things would tragically and brutally go wrong in the marriage, as Benita was divorced by her husband through a court proceeding after she had been arrested. But earlier, in the late 1920s, Benita had become close with a Polish intelligence agent, Major Jerzy Sosnowski, and the two had met at the horse races, and he and Benita had an affair. What the Major would do is use Benita as a spy for the Polish government, and he would force her to socialise with employees of the Ministry of the Reichswehr, the German army to obtain secret information and documents regarding German preparations for the future invasion of Poland that would later begin the Second World War. Sosnowski was described as an extremely handsome young man who served gallantly in the Austrian army and who loved women and excitement. Benita was infatuated with him and the parties they had and they would attend would be huge and would set the rumour mills spinning in Berlin. The young and handsome man became a key player in Berlin's social circles, and his quick success did arise suspicion within different people. Benita von Falkenhayn would learn information regarding the future invasion of Poland, and would then pass this on. But from around 1932, she was being monitored and spied on by the Abwehr Intelligence Agency. But Sosnowski's cover would be broken on the 27th of February 1934, and Falkenhayn was arrested with her friend, Renata von Natsma. Sosnowski's other lover. It was said that Baron Sosnowski gave another party, officially for his latest protégé, a dancer. Berlin's half-world knew what to expect. With glittering eyes, they hurried to his apartment. This time, a whole cordon of secret police were waiting at the door. Many times had the Baron been suspected of espionage. No charge ever stuck. He blamed his look on a curious signet ring that he always wore. Several weeks before this last party, he lost his ring pulling the Baroness's puppy from a canal. All the guests over 50 were rushed to jail, many of them kept there for days without a chance to change to the evening clothes that they had come in. Then the winning out started. One of the first to be released was the Baroness's first husband, von Falkenhayn, who turned out to be a member of the secret police himself. As Iron Nazi secrecy clamped down, the Sovnowski case became a lurid legend, strictly censored in the German press. After being imprisoned for a year, on the 16th of February 1935, the women were brought in front of the People's Court. This was a heavily Nazified court, established following Hitler's seizure of power, which sentenced many dissenters and resistors to death. The court proceedings would usually result in Nazi judges 
screeching and screaming in the faces of the defendants, before they were told they would be killed for their crimes. It was a way in which Hitler ensured he stayed in power and control, and struck fear into the hearts of the German population. But Benita, along with Renata von Matzma, were both sentenced to death, and were found guilty of espionage and treason, as it was said their actions threatened the national security of Nazi Germany. It was said that, in Berlin last week the Sosnovsky case finally reached its grim denouement, before the People's Court. This is packed exclusively with Hitler appointees, five of them aviators. Only the realm leader could alter its judgement, which takes precedence over the German Supreme Court, kicked by a new Nazi justice into discord. Normally the People's Court lets its sentences of death be known, only after the guilty heads have been chopped. Last week, by a great exception, underground Berlin grapevines got out word that the court had sentenced a baroness and Frau von Natzma to death, and had let off with life imprisonment Sosnovsky and two unnamed female employees of the Defence Ministry. Only one question remained. Only one question remained. Would the two doomed German women die by the Nazi axe, or by the method of which spies are traditionally privileged, a firing squad? but it was by the brutal acts that Benita van Falkenhayn would meet her bloody end in death. Two days after receiving the death sentence, her appeal was rejected, and it was only then Hitler who could intervene. But there were very few executioners in Germany who could perform an execution by axe, almost as if it was a medieval execution. The man for the job was Karl Groppler, who was the last axeman in Germany, and inside of Plotzensee prison, Benita would be killed. She was summoned from her cell on the 18th of February 1935, and she was then, it's believed, tied and secured to ensure she did not move. She would have been placed on a wooden block to allow the executioner to perform her execution swifter, but there was much that could go wrong using an axe. Throughout history, executioners such as Jack Ketch took many swings of their axe to take a head clean off, and many botches occurred. Gröpla, the executioner, used a hand axe, and he beheaded and executed Benita von Falkenhayn, she was one of the last people to be executed by axe in Germany. Later, when Hitler heard of the brutality of this execution, he viewed it as an archaic and dated execution method, and he did not want Nazi Germany and his regime to be considered medieval. He outlawed execution by axe, and then ordered that from then on, executions would be performed using hanging or the guillotine. The officials initially denied that Benita had been executed by axe, but then they did a U-turn and admitted she had been beheaded. It was said the back of her head had been shaved bald to allow the executioner to get a better swing, and it was said that the Baroness and Frau von Natzma were led in coarse, nondescript prison garb to the blood-caked block from which so many heads now roll in the sawdust. The headsman, incongruous, in his yellowish shirt front, his old silk hat and his red spotted tailcoat, raised a gleaming axe. Twice it swished down to sever a lovely neck and send the blood of a German woman spouting high. According to the Nazis, the Baroness was the first female aristocrat to lose her head to their new justice. Benita von Falkenheim was a German Baroness who was used by a Polish officer for information inside the military circles of the pre-Second World War Germany. Hitler's regime would execute her in a terrible and bloody way, and her execution is one which is forgotten about, but deserves to be known. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.